We're all about making sure you have the best tips for planning your Disney World vacation here at DFB Guide, but today I'm going to tell you about a few risks that I am willing to still take in Walt Disney World, and one that I'm absolutely not. Hopefully this will help on your planning adventures. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We are all about planning your Disney trip to the hilt and making sure you've got everything sorted out before you go and in line so you know you're gonna have an excellent vacation. Now, there are still a few things out there though that if you're not able to plan it, if you're not able to make sure that it's set in stone before you leave, that's okay. We're gonna tell you about a few of those risks that we are still willing to take in Walt Disney World and how to manage that process today on DFB Guide. But at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you about one risk I am not not willing to take when it comes to planning my Disney World trip. Even me, wh who goes to Disney World all the time, this is one risk I do not take. I make sure that it happens before I go. So I'll tell you about that at the end of the video. All right, let's get started. Number one, not making dining reservations. So if you want to dine at Be Our Guest or Cinderella's Royal Table, this is not a risk you want to take. If you have a restaurant you have to eat at, definitely book that reservation. But if you like to be spontaneous, you don't mind sitting in a bar or a lounge or ordering from a counter, you could go an entire Disney vacation without making any advanced dining reservations. I do it all the time. So if you want to try some of the fantastic high-end dining in Disney Springs or at Disney Resort Hotels, consider getting a bite to eat in their lounges or counter service spots. Even if those restaurants are booked up, you might still be able to get into the lounge because a lot of those are first come first served. California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort is a tough dining reservation to get, but their lounge is first come first serve and same goes for the lounges at Gico, the bar at Topolino's Terrace and Tune-In Lounge, which is attached to 50's Primetime. Also, some of our favorite lounges are the Brown Derby Lounge and Nomad Lounge. Those are great restaurants that'll serve you amazing food and it is table service. You sit down, you eat just like at any other restaurant, you just don't have to worry about making a dining reservation. So that's awesome. There's great counter service options all around Disney World too. We love Morimoto Street Food over there in Disney Springs. You can get the restaurant's famous ribs and ramen there. Satuli Canteen, Primo Piata, Bar Riva at Riviera, where you can get an awesome Monte Cristo sandwich. So there are more and more excellent counter service and quick service dining opportunities joining the Disney World restaurant list every single day. So there's a lot going on that you don't have to worry about getting an advanced dining reservation for. And also don't forget, there are several restaurants that will have availability. If you happen to be looking for a table service meal for lunch, almost any deluxe resort in Walt Disney World is going to have tables open because during the day, the majority of their guests are out at the parks. And so the deluxe resort table service locations have extra tables during the day. So escape from a park to a resort and have a nice, quiet, relaxing lunch. And be sure to check My Disney Experience when you're ready to eat and see who has available availability and then you can book an ADR really quickly right there. So I am totally willing to take the risk of not having a dining reservation as long as I'm flexible with what and where I need to eat. All right, battling those crazy crowds. I'm totally willing to take the risk to battle those crazy crowds, depending on what's happening. Some things are worth fighting for elbow room, whether you love Disney during the holidays, it's a madhouse at Christmas and New Year's week, or you wanna be part of a new land or ride opening. Sometimes it's worth going on that crazy crowd day. We've got plenty of videos on how to brave the crowds at Disney World, but our best advice is to plan ahead. This is the time you don't wanna risk not having an advanced dining reservation, as even our favorite lounges might be hard to get into on that crazy Christmas week time frame. Luckily, the parks will be open extra long hours during those super busy times, so if you don't mind getting up early and hitting rope drop, you might be able to get a few rides in before the huge crowds arrive. And if you're coming for a ride opening, we've got quite a few of those coming up in the next two years, you're going to want to show up really early. For the opening of Galaxy's Edge and Rise of the Resistance, crowds started showing up at 3 a.m. and were led into the park on the rides well before the official park opening time. Either way, get ready for crazy long lines for everything from snacks to bathrooms and potential park or land closures. If things get too crowded, you can check your My Disney experience for that. Take advantage of every option to skip that line. Make fast passes as soon as your booking window opens. Make sure you have those dining reservations lined up and use mobile order for any counter service meals or snacks. You can even get mobile order meals to go on some restaurants, which is great if the seating area at the restaurant is too crowded and you need to relocate. Crowds are fine. You can handle crowds with the right planning. So if you want to go for that big ride opening or if you need to go during a busy time because of your kid's school schedule, you can do it. I know you can. Just plan ahead and take our tips with you. 
All right, we're definitely willing to risk how much travel time we have to get from here to there. We talk a good bit about how you definitely want to leave yourself enough time to get from place to place at Disney World. Waiting on buses, monorails, boats, and even a delayed Skyliner can seriously set you back and take up a lot of your day. Disney recommends giving yourself an hour and a half to get to any dining reservation, but sometimes that just doesn't work out. So what happens if you're running late for a reservation? For FastPass, you usually have a grace period of about 15 minutes after your FastPass time to show up and tap your magic band. This isn't always the case when it's super busy though, so if you're there during Christmas week, I probably wouldn't risk it. Dining reservations should have a bit of a grace period as well, but if you know you're going to be late, you can try to modify that dining reservation in the Disney Experience app or contact the restaurant and give them a heads up. They might be able to hold your table for you. Now, if you need to get somewhere quick, if you are running late, you can take a minivan directly to where you need to go, no transferring at Skyliner stations or the parks. Minivan prices start around $25, so they're not exactly cheap, but they might be cheaper than the $10 per person no-show fee that comes with missing a dining reservation. Now, our team here at DFB has even missed their magical express in order to stay in the parks a little bit longer, Um, so they did not get back to the airport, but Disney was very accommodating and helped them out to get back to the airport as well. So, yep, sometimes we're willing to risk uh, our transportation time just to get one extra ride on Haunted Mansion. We do it all the time, um, but you should still be able to get where you need to go. There are still options. All right, we're totally willing to risk some terrible weather to go to Disney World. We've been to Disney World in all sorts of weather and every season, and we can say that some are definitely better than others for sure. But if it's your only trip to Disney traveling during the super hot summer or the really rainy season, you can still do it. Don't forget the terrible weather also means lower crowds. People leave the park, so you might be there all by yourself and be able to ride things over and over and over again. So it can be a great deal to risk that terrible weather and still go to Walt Disney World. If you come prepared with ponchos, rain-friendly shoes and umbrellas, or you seek shelter during the storm, they're usually pretty short, you can literally weather the storm in the park. If you're visiting during some super hot weather, make sure to take it easy, hit the parks early and late instead of midday, take that break at the pool at midday, and remember to stay hydrated, take advantage of all the free water stations around the parks, etc. So plan ahead, be ready, and have a great time. Once it starts raining and you're already already wet. Who cares? Get in the parks and keep riding rides. It's a blast. Now, of course, you do want to be careful. We want to make sure that you guys aren't out there in the middle of horrible hurricanes or thunderstorms or anything that's going to potentially injure you. So, you know, use your best judgment. (laughs) But if it's just raining or if it's a pop-up thunderstorm that's going to pass quickly, stick it out in the parks. It's going to be really fun afterwards when everyone's gone. Next one is waiting until the last minute to buy seasonal merchandise. Seasonal or specialty merchandise is super fun at Disney World and it's super tempting when it first comes out. Who doesn't want the brand new Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party Magic Band on the first day or the Food and Wine Festival t-shirt that first weekend? I always do, (laughs) I still get sucked into it. Once in a while, things do sell out, but a lot of seasonal and specialty merchandise will go on deep discount by the time the end of the season or festival or event rolls around, so keep that in mind. If you happen to be visiting at the end of a season or event, look around for that discounted merchandise. But if you're only visiting at the beginning and you have to have an item, go ahead and grab it. It's not worth missing out on a must-get just to save a few bucks. Um, But know that if you are local or if you do visit quite often, that a lot of that seasonal merchandise is going to go on sale and so you don't want to spend the extra money to get it at the beginning when you can get it at the end for cheaper. Next thing I'm willing to take a risk on in Disney World sometimes, not making fast passes. As you may know, you can book up to three fast passes per day, 30 days in advance if you're staying off site and 60 days in advance if you're staying in a Walt Disney World resort. But if you missed your window or those top attractions are gone, don't stress too much. There's a good chance you'll still get to ride your favorite ride. After you use your first three, you can reserve additional fast passes one at a time. The My Disney Experience app will actually give you a little notification that you're eligible for more fast passes that day, and you might be able to pick up a last minute fast pass for a big ticket ride. People are always changing and canceling plans, so just keep refreshing the app and you might get lucky. 
Don't want to play MDE roulette? Plan on getting up early. If you want the lowest wait time, you're going to want to arrive at least 30 to 45 minutes before park opening. A lot of times the parks will open earlier than advertised, so you don't want to miss that rope drop after getting up early. Know where you're going too. Most people are probably going to be headed to the same place as you, but you don't want to get stuck following the crowd. Check park maps so you know where your first ride is. This one is kind of half and half for me. Sometimes I'm willing to risk it, sometimes I'm not. Like for boys to men, like I definitely want to be front row. Epcot has several concert series every year. They usually correspond with those festivals. You'll have Garden and Rocks during Flower and Garden Festival, Eat to the Beat during Food and Wine, etc. Lots of very well-known performers come to these series. 98 Degrees, Boys to Men, Plain White Tees, Hanson, lots more from all musical genres. These concerts are free to Epcot guests and the concerts are incredibly popular. So much so that for many performers, guests line up for hours to get a seat. But here's the good and bad part. The concerts are held several times per night in an open air amphitheater. So that's got a roof on about half the seats. So if you're not sitting in the theater, you can still hear the music and get glimpses of the band pretty easily. So if you like the performer, but don't need to be sitting front row, you can still enjoy the experience of seeing them live without wasting two hours of your Epcot time waiting to get a seat. And if the performer isn't all that popular, they're great, I promise they're great, but maybe they're not all that popular that day, there may be an open seat left even after the concerts have begun, so you can score that seat without waiting forever. So if you're interested in, but not obsessed with the performer, you can easily take the risk of not getting a seat because you'll still be able to hear and see them just by standing behind the amphitheater while the concert is happening. But if there is a performer you're super jazzed about seeing at an Epcot concert series, there are two ways to make sure you get that seat. First, you can book a dining package. Nearly all the concert series that accompany festivals in Epcot offer dining packages with a meal at an Epcot restaurant accompanied by a guaranteed seating at the concert. Now, we report this info on Disney Food Blog when the dining packages open up, so just book one that corresponds with your favorite performer and your golden. Second, you can get in that long standby line if you don't have a dining package a couple of hours in advance and you'll maybe get a seat, but it's not guaranteed. So if I love that performer, I won't risk it. I'll get a dining package. If I like them a lot, I'll risk not getting a seat and just watch standing up. All right, now here is the one thing that I promised you I would tell you that I will not risk when I go to Disney World, and that's waiting to book my hotel room. You shouldn't risk this either because there's literally nothing to lose in booking your hotel room early. There are thousands of hotel rooms in Disney World, over 20 hotels on property, but if there's a particular spot where you want to stay, book it. Yes, if you wait until the last minute, you will likely still be able to book some sort of room at Walt Disney World. But your hotel cost outlay is a massive part of your vacation budget. You should love where you stay. It's always great to get a discount on your hotel room, but I tell DFB readers and viewers all the time to book your hotel as soon as you know you're going to Disney World. Then, if a discount is announced, call back and apply the discount to your room or rebook with the updated discount. That way you can guarantee you're staying where you want to stay first and foremost, and then getting the bonus of that discount when it's announced later is an extra bonus. If you wait to book your hotel until a discount is announced, the particular room you need or even the whole hotel may be sold out. So discount or not, you ain't staying there. So don't take the risk of not staying where you want to stay for your Disney World vacation. Book that hotel. It can always be canceled or changed later if needed. I hope that's clear. People ask me all the time, you know, when should I book my hotel? Book it as soon as you know you're going and you can change it or cancel it or update it or add the discount. You can do all kinds of changes. So there's no, there's literally nothing to lose in booking that hotel early. So go ahead and do that early. All right, guys, I hope that's been helpful. There's a few risks that I'm willing to take in Disney World still and one that I am absolutely not willing to take because it doesn't benefit you at all to put off booking that hotel room. So thanks for listening, you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that you will continue to watch DFB Guide. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of great, great planning videos coming up for you here in January. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing that information with you. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.